Previously on Tales of Bersuria, we found an underleveled Code Red Demon in the South Gen region and killed it before it could use its gimmick. We also started a bunch of side quest chains, but didn't commit to any of them yet. Thanks to all the cat's chests we opened, we received an invitation to Cat's Corner, but Velvet turned out to be allergic to cats. Okay, so I to pay a visit to Titania. Your destiny is wrapped up with whoever sent that challenge, Skipper. Good luck. But I know I, I don't know who sent it, but they're the one in need of luck. I'm gonna postpone that. I heard the enemy is pretty high level compared to everything else so far. I have a bad feeling about this. I think it's time to lay low. Hanging in plain sight. Yeah, this place might be a good hideout. But why is the event... Why is there an event right there? Is that where the challenge is? Hmm... Well, let's put old place again. It's weird to feel homesick about a prison. Home really is where you make it, huh? I don't see any exorcists, at least. They must have pulled a runner once they were finished here. If our challenger knew that when selecting this location, I suspect we're in for a serious fight. We need to stay careful. Okay, visiting Titania... Uh, uh, even if you don't... F and activating that event right at the front s uh, gate will activate this event in the assault for some reason. It's really weird. It's Morgrim, actually. Yeah, I think the boss that Morgrim unlocks should be easier to deal with than whatever is waiting for me in Titania. Well, hello there. I heard you woke the four Empyreans. I'm quite impressed. What do you want, Morgrim? I just came to pass on a little information to you. Specifically, that an Earth Pulse entrance has opened up. My guess is that it opened when you chased Innominat out. An Earth Pulse entrance, huh? We might be able to see more of the Earth in Historia! Indeed. If we could learn more about Artorias' past, it might give us a hint about how to take on Innominat. That's just what she wants us to think. Anyone else smell a trap? I don't think we have to worry about that. Are you sure? Shigure loathed any form of trickery. If Morgrim was that kind of Moloch, he would have struck her down long ago. I appreciate your confidence in me. What you do with the information is up to you. Where is this entrance? It's at the Shrine of Tranquility, in a ball. You must have learned about this from the Abbey. Why pass it on to me? No special reason. I just happened to think of Lord Artorius's Malek. I thought it might be nice if I could help you learn a little more about her. You mean Ceres? All right. I'll check it out. What should humans say in their prayers to the revived Empyrean? It could affect the future shape of the world, for all we know. <sighs> Velvet? Is everything okay? Don't worry. I'm alright. I was just thinking of something that Selica liked to do whenever we passed a gravestone. What was it? I have a secret to tell you, she'd say. Then she'd hand me a flower and add, take it to the grave. What does that even mean? That's just a bad pun. Exactly. Selica loved her puns. Nico's dogs are so cowardly that when a stranger comes by, they don't bark. They hide up on the woof. <laughs> hey! That's pretty good! Ugh, feel like someone just broke my funny bone. I always told her to stop with all the bad jokes. I thought they were so lame. But now that she's gone, I miss them. Every day with Selica was bright, filled with joy. I realize that now. She'd be happy to hear that. You know, it sounds like Selica and Magilu had a lot in common. Hmm. If you're trying to say I'm an unread pun itent punster, I'd have to object. But if you're trying to say that I'm witty, charming, and the party mood maker, I'll take it. Hey, Velvet, you can think of me as your new sister. I won't stop you. I'll even let you call me Big Sis. I'm this close to suing you for defamation of character. I knew I'd see you in court one day. Judge! Objection! This is a witch hunt! <laughs> You're incorrigible. Anyway, we don't have time to get all misty-eyed. Let's go. That definitely looks like an Earth Pulse entrance. I don't sense Inomi not here. We still need to be careful. We might have ousted him from the Earth Pulses, but the four Empyreans are in play now. If we want to learn anything useful, We'll need to go inside. Be ready for anything. Both the opening and the advent began here. 
This is where the me before I was born died. And it's where Lord Artorius sacrificed Velvet's brother. Hmm. The former leader of the Exorcists and Melchior searched high and low for the resting place of Enominat, the nameless Empyrean. No wonder they never found it. Who'd have thought he'd be sealed away out here in the middle of nowhere? And these patterns. They're similar to those I've seen in foreign temples, built during the Era of Darkness. That's some good camouflage. I doubt Artorias realized the true purpose of this shrine until he witnessed Enominat's power firsthand. Maybe. Hey. Can we seal Inominat back in here? No, we can't. I can't detect even a trace of the original seal's art. Me neither. But I can tell you this is the Earth Pulse point. Oh well. If a cat's already out of the bag, it won't go back in. Believe me, I've tried. Even if there was a way to seal him here again, I wouldn't do it. I want to settle things with Inominat my way. <laughs> Still enemies here. A foe worth killing. Oh crap, they're power linked. <laughs> Statistically, this enemy is supposed to be on the same level as Shigure and Melchior, but I'm not really seeing it, even with the power linked enemies on its side. Gotta get rid of these somehow. Yeah, even though the power linked enemies are lower level, they're probably a bit more durable than usual just because they've got, they're they drawing power from the boss. Still going down pretty quickly as long as I can inflict status effects on it. And now just the main boss itself. 100k, that's not quite as much as some of the more recent bosses, I think. But it seems like it might have some powerful spells. Still seems somewhat easier to stagger than a lot of the human bosses. Alright, it's already stunned. Just try to get a power hit combo going. Oh, I still had zero impact vest from those armored guys, didn't I? Quivering stance. And knocked me on one hit point, but I still got souls. Keep going. Now would be a pretty good time to activate my combo. Oh, it feels been way too long since I managed to get a good old-fashioned combo like that. <laughs> Expert Ignisite. Good, good. With that, the oath is now formed. Ceres, take heed. I've now embedded a portion of the Ard formula within your corporeal form. Over the next several months, it should take hold and crystallize using the power of the oath. The art you'll use to control the power my body has accumulated? That is correct. Brunhild, the sorcerer's ring. It is an art that was lost long, long ago on this continent. Reviving it requires considerable investment. So that is why you tied the oath to my life force. The formula will only be completed once I've... died. Do you have something to say? No. I understand that this is a necessary step in order to realize armatization and bring a Nominat under your control. And even though Siegfried possesses a similar power, Lord Melchior has yet to successfully locate the device. Knowing that, 
Our research must be accelerated. That is the only reasonable way. <sighs> then you understand. From here on, you are to focus on completing the Sorcerer's Ring. As you say. I trust you're not having any second thoughts about this? She's a Moloch. Here to serve and nothing more. And today she's proved herself quite loyal. Yes. I am Ceres. I am your Moloch. I am simply a tool for you to fulfill your ideals. So Ceres took her oath to make armatization possible. But what a heavy price to make her pay. And Artorius did it knowing that she was his reincarnated wife. Oh, who am I to talk? There was a time not long ago when I'd have done the same thing. Regardless, things are now starting to come together. What happened to Ceres and to Eifried and Siegfried? It's all related. This all occurred so Artorius could armatize with Inominat and control him. And then Velvet ended up devouring that power and making herself public enemy number one. How deliciously ironic. No, Ceres knew what was going on, and she still... But the Abbey has secured Siegfried's formula, and they're almost certainly using it to complete Inominat's armatus. Let's keep going, Velvet. Yeah, we've come too far to turn back now. I'll see this through to the end. It's been a full century since Midgand reunited the fractured land. In that time, we've enjoyed a blissful era of peace and prosperity. But the world has also seen its faith in moral purity slowly decay, only to be supplanted by deep, profound sin. Things have gotten so bad that nobody has even realized that the four Empyreans now slumber. I'm entirely certain that demons will only become ever more rampant. And yet I'm powerless to stop it. Empyreans? Demons? What are you talking about? I'm sorry. You shouldn't have to hear me grumble. You've already done so much for me. It's fine, really. You've seen so much of the world. Things that I never even knew existed. Yes. I've seen mountains spew flame and lands covered in ice. I've crossed stormy seas and ravines deeper than the eye can see. That's so amazing. Weren't you ever frightened? Of course. We are nothing in the face of nature. It takes so little for a person to lose their life out in the wilds. But in spite of the terror, those seas, the mountains, the forests, the deserts, they're absolutely breathtaking. And even in the harshest of climes, people still find a way to live there and carve out something resembling a home. <laughs> I think I understand you now. How do you mean? I can tell you really love this world. Not just that, but all the people who live in it, too. The world and its people. Do you really think so? I'm sure of it. Just remember that you are one of those people, too, you know? You really should try to take care of yourself a little more. I can't do anything right. How could I possibly learn to like myself? I believe in you, Arthur. I mean, my family and I are already quite fond of you just the way you are, no matter your faults. Thank you, Selica. That was Velvet's sister and Artorius. That's how I remember Selica. And him, too. I see. Lord Artorius. Eleanor, I know that the exorcists believe from the bottom of their hearts that their work will save everyone. Perhaps. But that won't stop you from fighting them, will it? No, it won't. Oh, isn't ignorance bliss? Should we really keep digging up the past like this? Velvet's never been one to pick the easy road. Uh, what's wrong, kiddo? I was just thinking, the Earth in Historia is supposed to be a vast record of world history. It could show us anything. So why does it only ever focus on events related to Velvet's life? Perhaps it's reacting to her presence. Or maybe 
Since this place used to be a Nominat's vessel, his power is still influencing what we're seeing. If that were true, shouldn't you be able to control the Earth and Historia, kiddo? You're supposed to be part of Inominat. Think of all the juicy secrets we could dig out of the past! Oh, I'm getting pins and needles! I'm not so sure. Having that much access might be frightening. Some things aren't so fun to learn about. It's bad timing. I hear that you've finally gotten your assignment. Have they given you a name yet? Malak number two. That isn't your name. Huh? You don't remember anything, do you? But of course you don't. You died before you were even born. I... But my memories? They came back. And these memories, they torment me. I can never replace them, and I can't undo them. I don't really understand. You don't have to. Just know that I was happier before my memories and free will reawakened. If I had one wish, I'd wish that you stay the way you are. You're going? I'm about to free someone who can kill the strongest Empyrean and the Head Exorcist. I suppose you could call it revenge. Against myself and against my past. Goodbye. Please, find it in your heart to forgive your mother when she failed to protect you. Wait, what? How'd we get here? This is the prison island! Probably by an Earth Pulse Warp. I'll have to send for the Von Eltia to come get us. I guess I must have met Ceres at some point, but... I don't have any memory of it happening. <sighs> but why would that place connect to here? Well, I mean, this is an Earth Pulse point, isn't it? Ceres might have willed it to be somehow. What do you mean? Velvet is right. I think the Earth and Historia showed us that memory because Ceres wanted us to see it. Or Velvet and Lafi said at least. I think I understand. And... I... I think I agree. It may have taken us all the way out here, but at least we have something to show for it. I suppose we can't complain. Yeah. This was worthwhile. All right. Let's get to the harbor. I can think and decide for myself now, but it's kind of nice. I feel alive like this. So rest easy, Mom. I'll be okay. I can actually go back in if I want. Okay, I actually have enough this time. You there with the big sword. You've got skills, don't you? How can you tell without seeing me in battle? I'm just a mere swordsmith, but I've known all sorts of swordsmen. Sometimes a sword's spirit is much weaker than its owner's, and it can't match his prowess. Other times, the sword's spirit is too strong for its wielder to master, and it holds its owner in disdain. You can tell? Even if someone doesn't draw his sword? Not always, but sometimes. In this case, it was easy. His spirit is in perfect sync with the one residing in his blade. Really? I never thought about my sword that way before. I'm sure whoever forged that sword is glad to have a man like you wield his work. I'd love to meet a swordsman to whom I could happily entrust my work. But first, I need practice. I've got to sharpen my skills and my spirit. Good luck! Thanks. I've only met one man who possessed the same aura as that fellow of the huge blade there. That's right, Legget Shigure himself. I'm not worried about in the slightest. The exorcists have everything under control. They'll keep us all safe. Just stay calm. We're all worried, ma'am. Why don't you relax and be scared of the rest of us? 
You're right. What's happening with the world? The world is coming to an end. I don't want to go alone. I know. I'll get a pet bunny. That's a great idea. I'll keep a giant isopod as a pet. Whew, I'm starving. I could sure go for some ramen and pot stickers. How can you think about ramen and pot stickers at a time like this? I'm not exactly proud of it, but I can't help myself. Well, you're only human, I suppose. I heard that this recent rash of demon attacks is the work of a demon known as the Lord of Calamity. I heard that too. They say she built a nest in Mount Kilaros where she breeds swarms of demons like some kind of queen ant. Really? That's not what I heard. I heard she's a giant hideous hag with the head of a dragon and a mouth with gnashing teeth in each hand. I think they just called you a hideous hag. Mouth hands? Oh, how ghastly! That's not all. Those mouths spew forth clouds of toxic gas. Any human caught in it turns into a demon. Wait, is that where demon blight comes from? I couldn't say. It's just a rumor after all. But I haven't even gotten to the crazy part. This demon has a familiar, a short little thing that uses a huge board to create winds that spread the demon's poison. Rumor says that the nasty little creature takes the appearance of a trickster magician and is actually the demon's true form. So some short little monster has caused all of this? <gasps> kind of makes you hate anyone short, doesn't it? <laughs> so the Lord of Calamity is actually a short, phony magician. What do you know? Woe is me! My cover's been blown! Go, my hideous hag! Devour those meddlesome humans! Oh goodness, we're doomed. The exorcists have lost their power. Just calm down. There's no monster that could rob the exorcists of their abilities. Right, doesn't make sense, does it? Come think of it, we never really did understand what the exorcist's powers were exactly. They appeared out of thin air, so it stands to reason that they vanished in the same way. Yeah, we've been so caught up in all the strangeness lately that we forgot to stop and think. I've got a message from the boss. An antique collector named Wan Jin has died, and his sizable stash is being sold off. What do I care about some old pots and paintings? I doubt you do. This message isn't for you. It's for Aizen. For me? Why? This Wan Jin person was apparently quite the dragon researcher, amassing old books and materials on them. The boss just figured some of those books might come in handy to you. I see. There's a shop out in Port Cadnix that's unloading them as we speak. You might want to get a move on before they're gone. Port Cadnix. I'll keep that in mind. Give Tabitha my regards. The antique stealer you're looking for will be at a storehouse in Port Cadnix. How'd they miss this one? That was the reason why I couldn't get the event to show up in Cadnix before. I know I've been saying that I want to go to the capital, but I've given up on it. Oh? I decided I want to stay here in the port. Where you are. I see. Oh ho ho! If it weren't Eisen, I haven't seen you in forever, laddie. I heard an antique stealer was handling Wan Jin's collection. I take it that's you? His father and I go way back, so his family begged me to handle it. You know this guy? He is... excitable. But he's got a good eye for treasure. He's the one who sold me Fujibayashi's rod. Oh, the one we used to fish up that demon pot, right? From the looks of it, you've already sold everything. I had tons for sale! A huge, massive collection, but the customers came rushing in and bought about everything that weren't nailed down. <sighs> and here we are, a week late and a sack of gold short. Come now, Conjurus. Never underestimate the great Donella. I thought this might happen, so I set something special aside. And it's a real hoot, too! A book written in ancient Avarost. Why do you have that book? For years, the Abbey's been scooping up every scrap of paper with Avarost writings. It seems they've a bone to pick with it. But mischievous lads like yourself have always liked getting your hands on such forbidden fruits, yeah? How much is it? It's yours. Free. Gratis. I've heard the rumors. If this book helps you smash the Abbey to rubble, that's enough for me. Well, if you're sure, I'll take it. Of course! Another ancient book. We're gonna need Grimoire's help to read it. I had a hunch this might happen, so I actually brought Grim along with me. <sighs> Let's get this over with. Yes, teacher. If you read this part as Sneera, then it means should do. But if it's a snick, then it means don't do. The other word attached to it is pronounced cre. Which of those first two readings feels right to you? Sound it out. 
Kresnik feels right somehow. All right. And Kresnik translates as? To retrieve something intact. To dig it out. But if that's what it means, then... Yes, this is quite the extraordinary book you found. Hey, you two mind explaining what's so special in a way the rest of us can understand? It's research about dragons and Malachim. Written long ago by someone trying to figure out how to change a dragon back into a Moloch. They can be changed back? Does the book tell us how it can be done? The book only contains records of failures and the conclusion it was impossible. But something interesting is written in the corner here. Unless the intact heart of a white-horned dragon is consumed, a Moloch's blessing shall be everlasting. Hmm. By devouring the heart of a white-horned dragon, a Moloch's blessing will be lost. Are you saying that this is a way to break the Reaper's curse? If what this book says is true, yes. Meaning one Moloch would have to eat another Moloch's heart? That's a little gruesome even by my standards. Wait, was that something that actually happened during the ancient Avaros period? The book states that during the course of the research, some Malachim were discovered to have lost their blessings. But it's not conclusive. Guess there's no way to know unless we give it a shot. Do you intend to try? Zavid, what are you doing here? A nice old lady at the market told me what you guys were up to. I guess you know the Blood Wings too, then. Oh, you know, the ladies just can't keep away from a good man like me. Young and old, they just love me. Huh, <laughs> not a chance. You guys don't know how to take a joke, do you? Well, some things aren't a joking matter. You gonna try and kill her? And what if I do? You won't. I'll stop you. Even if it means you have to kill me? What is it with you and killing everything? Maybe you've been a little too receptive to the whole Reaper thing, huh? Don't answer a question with another question. I asked you first, Aizen. Sometimes, death can be the release someone desperately needs. <sighs> I will kill that white horn dragon. Uh! Don't call her a dragon, damn it! <sighs> she has a name Theodora. I have nothing more to say to you. This is your final warning. Ancient Avros book. I wonder if it says eating the heart will make them lose their blessing, but won't the heart be full of malevolence and maybe turn them into a dragon anyways? Maybe that's how they lose their blessing. Straight up, Eisen hasn't got a lick of sense when it comes to curiosities. But when it comes to people, well, that's a whole different story. Suffice to say that when it comes to anything but business, I'm happy to have him around. Bwaha! Who would ever guess that devouring a dragon heart could lift the Reaper's curse? Oh, what a glorious day it'll be when you drop the curse part and just become a Reaper at heart. It's like a bad fly. The more you try to shoo it away, the more it sticks around. Do you think Aizen will really go through with it? Don't ask me. Well, I can't exactly talk to Mogilu and Rokuro about it. Tact is lost on them. You're all I've got. <sighs> hey, Aizen? What? Are you... are you really gonna kill the dragon to get rid of the curse? Yeah, I am. Even knowing what she means to Zavid? All the more reason to do it. All the more? What do you mean? I've said my piece. You can figure it out on your own. <sighs> Come on, just accept it. Once something's fallen in the ocean, it's gone. You don't understand. You can't find a rank 8 Teresa and Oscar card anywhere anymore. I'll fish it up. Just wait and see. Those exorcist cards have a lot to answer for. Did you hear? Another group of exorcists got taken out by the Whitehorn. Again? But they sent praetors after it this time. Is it really that strong? The exorcists managed to wound it pretty bad. But they were still wiped out. Between this dragon and the Lord of Calamity... 
What's going to happen to the kingdom? We have to keep it together. That thing's still out in the Guybrook ice field, you know. If the worst comes to pass, we need to ensure the public's safety. We'd better make sure we know the evacuation routes. Yes, sir. Whitehorn. They must be talking about Theodora. Yeah. If the dragon is that badly wounded, then now's my chance. Let's head for the Guybrook ice field. Uh-huh. With people talking about that dragon so much, I wouldn't be surprised if we ran into Zavid. Yeah. And if he and Aizen butt heads again, I don't think we'll be able to avoid a fight this time. Aizen said he was going to kill that dragon because she's important to Zavid. And he said that to kill was to save. What could he mean by that? Whitehorn is out on the Guybrook Ice Field. But don't forget, when it or not, your quarry is still a dragon. What if the rumors are true? What if Molkeen really are disappearing? Would that mean the end of the world? Fish and error hunt. I can't increase your reward, but I will offer you my links. How's that? She's hurt, just like they said. Is this really how you mean to lift your curse? I'm not the cursed one. I'm game. Let's go. I told you, that ain't happening on my watch. And if you stop me? What else? I'm going to figure out a way to save her. If that's what you want to try, then go ahead. But know that I'm not going to stop. You know, I just don't get it. How could a guy like Ifri be friends with someone so hellbent on senseless killing? Sometimes, to kill someone is to save them. Who the hell is going to be saved by being killed? There's not one damn person in the whole world! No matter what happens, you can't give up on living. That's my creed. Well then. Guess we're doing this. What? Why does it have to come to this? You both want to save the same person! Sometimes, you just have to fight these things out. Yeah. Are you serious? How? He didn't even have a chance. Edith, I ain't holding back, I said. Good. If you want to stop me, then fight to kill. He'll get us the game over even though he's supposedly against killing us. It's weird. They do that a lot in video games, so maybe the dragon is going to kill us if he beats us up too much. Yeah, I, uh, Aizen is going to struggle a lot in this battle if he's in close range mode. Probably would have been better if I just uh, set him to pure long range for this one. Just so he doesn't uh, get in within Zavid's range. Zavid himself just likes to sidestep everything. Better at sidestep timing than me. Yeah. Th the allies in this game are good at sidestep timing, so of course they had to give the same AI to the enemies, too. And, uh, yeah, Aizen just gets stunned, stunned once and he's already down to three digits. And the problem with fighting unknown types is that your Fury and Finisher is random, so you might end up using something to resist him, too. Also, I pr probably should have dis I forgot to disable all the Earth type arts from everyone's art list. That probably would have helped a bit too in terms of DPS. No way to get a power hit combo on him, so it, he he's going to be a lot stronger than most bosses. A lot more durable. At this point, I I finally got wise to the whole just set him to range mode a tactic. We really need to remember to do that for fighting singular bosses. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to survive on chaos mode, where one stun is basically the end of them. 
And I lost the momentum because Velvet lost the soul, so this could be bad. Ow. I didn't properly dodge that last hit. And I got hit a bunch there, and I'm almost dead. With only two souls. How will I make it out of this? Alright, got a soul back, and I used one up to go into Ferian mode to get some hit points back. But that didn't last long because he smacked me a lot. Oh, uh, no, I'm almost dead again. If I don't, if I don't do something now, I'm dead, doomed. Yeah, using I, I used my Mystic Art to get a soul back, but maybe it would have been better if I instead just use switch uh, switch in and out really quickly. Maybe that would be a more efficient way to use my BG to get my souls back. Instead of just smack it, using up half my BG just for the Mystic Art. Eisen managed to recover most of his hit points at least. So hopefully I can keep this momentum up. And if he didn't just sidestep and guard everything. I think I should have focused more on wider uh, 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 sweeping attacks that way. Even if he sidesteps, he might get hit by some of the later hits. Right now my attacks have too narrow of a range and that might be screwing me over. That might be the best way to deal with human type enemies. And I'm almost dead already. And somehow my, my claw missed the first time. Okay, Mystic Art Chain. Unfortunately, since I cannot power hit him, it's even this will not deal a whole lot of damage. But it will give everyone some souls with which they can use to s heal themselves up and attack. Yeah, Aizen is, Aizen's break soul might not be a good idea on chaos mode since it's a bit harder to stun or knock down the enemy. Still better than nothing, of course. Hopefully, I've, and I also forgot to set Eleanor to ranged mode. That was a big mistake. But luckily she's somewhat more durable than Aizen, so I guess it'll work out. As long as I get a decent grade in the end, I don't care. Even if it looks sloppy. Yeah, close having close range ally is kind of difficult for the higher level gameplay. I'm glad Discord had that much range, otherwise it'd be wasted. Come on, almost there. Get him with his own element. <laughs> uh, if only he could be this strong as a party member in Zestiria, then we have no problem dealing with the likes of Heldolf. Come on, he's on fire! Get him! Ugh. <sighs> yet, at least. Thank you for saving me. I should be thanking you. I'm just glad you're not hurt. Me? That's right, kid. Nothing would hurt Theodora more than to harm a child. Theodora... The thing is, even when a child's lost their parents, their family, even when despair fills their heart, if you hold their hand, they'll squeeze back. Those hands, frozen cold from fear and insecurity, 
will start to feel warmth again. That warmth, a tiny spark deep within, can rekindle their feeling of being alive because they possess the determination to keep on living. That's why Theodora never turned her back or gave up on a child. She was more passionate about life than anyone I've ever known. And that's why you're protecting her. Just how long do you plan on cleaning up after that dragon? She's Theodora. Once a Moloch becomes a dragon, there's no turning back. And you think that gives you the right to kill her? You talk like you have such noble intentions, but you're not fooling anyone. You just want to lift your Reaper's curse. I'm not the one who's cursed. You're telling me there's some other Reaper out there? Don't answer a question with another question. Shut the hell up! You're all talk and no fight. You're a damn coward. That's all you are. In the future, if you try to lay even a finger on Theodora, well, there's going to be hell to pay. Give me hell if you like, but think about one thing first. Think about what she taught you about living, and consider what it really means to be alive. Why does it have to be like this? I get that their creeds mean a lot to them both, but isn't that all the more reason for them to try to understand each other? But instead, they resort to fighting without even listening to each other first. How can they be like this? Yeah, I don't want them to fight either. But there's something else I can't figure out. Is it about why Aizen's so intent on killing that dragon? That's part of it. What I can't figure out is what he means when he says that killing can also save someone. And how he's not the one with the curse. Maybe he feels pity for Theodora, and how she's doomed to keep on living as a dragon. Yeah. What does it really mean to live? <sighs> this topic sure got deep fast. Yeah. Oh, I managed to finally get no KO victory. And I got a few things mastered for it too. Was it worth it? I don't get why the the white horn dragon side quest doesn't show up on this list. It's so inconsistent. Inconsistent design, I say. They really want to be consistent. They allow you to scroll through every single possible quest that's available at the point of this game. Instead, they only show a handful of them. The boss has a request for you. Not a message, but a request. A Whitehorn Dragon has been showing up in the Aldina Plains. The boss wants you to kill it. Since when did the Bloodwings become agents of justice? Interested in protecting the world from dragons? Hey, we're not out to save the world. This is just to put an end to Zavid's madness. Did Zavid do something in particular? He's been harassing exorcists, trying to get more information on that dragon. That's got the Abbey on alert which makes trouble for us. Our spies in the Abbey can't operate under these conditions. And that's where we come in. Does that mean Zavid is in the Aldina Plains too? Got it in one. Just be careful. Zavid and that dragon are even more agitated than usual. Let's go. Are you gonna fight Zavid again? The time has come. Good luck with the White Horn. The Aldina Plains are your best bet. As for Zavid, say no more, I'll take care of it. takes me back. I remember the first time I tried to talk to you. You smacked me pretty good then, too. Man, that hurts. You sure don't know how to hold back, do you? Savid! Eisen White! Just watch. What? So... You're just waiting for me to die so you can help yourself to her heart. Is that it? Sorry. 
But that's not happening. I'm not dying here, and I won't let you kill her. I'll decide what I do, Zavid. <laughs> Then I'm deciding to help Savid, no matter what you tell me, Aizen. <laughs> Savid! Quick, take the gun. This dragon wouldn't hesitate to attack a child, or the man who risks his own life to protect it. <clears throat> tell me, Savid, who is this white horn dragon? <sighs> You said that your creed was to never give up on living, no matter what may happen. If you really believe that, would you say that you're living right now? <sighs> because to me, you don't look like someone truly living. The hell are you saying? I understand now. Aizen really isn't the one who's cursed. By killing Theodora, he's actually saving... It's time to lift this curse. I'll fight too! To save Savid and Theodora! Watch out for the malevolence, Sloppy said. You too, Aizen. Alright, this boss isn't too bad due to the fact that it cannot sidestep or use mystic arts, but it still has a very weird hitbox. It's not a circle like the more standard bosses. Because of its long snake like body. Yeah, I can just turn around and I will my attacks might end up whiffing. Or push me further away from it. Fortunately, I think I picked a somewhat decent move set for exploring its weaknesses. Now, of course, I have all ranged characters, and try this time I set them to only use arts that are either deal effective or neutral damage. I still lost a soul back there, which kind of sucks. Better get back somehow. Should be easy since it's not quite as good dodging as the Veed. Yes, I got one. Boy, it started guarding again. Yeah, it may have more durability, but still just a big punching bag if it can't dodge. I activated it too soon. I should have waited a little bit more. Well, I did try to t end this chain specifically for Aizen, so we can get in on the action too. But he doesn't really have a whole lot of ma spells that are effective against this boss. That kind of sucks, considering this is kind of his side quest. Gotta turn into a dragon to beat a dragon! Ah, soul burst. It's a big radius of hurt. Allows them to not have to stun me or anything to get their soul. Flare Vortex fortunately only works on close range opponents. But Aizen Elder didn't fully dodge that one. Alright, just gotta get the momentum back since I have a ton of souls. We'll get there eventually. It's going steadily. If only I was a bit more patient than I could have ended perfectly. But I still managed to get basic Mystic Art finish with her first level Mystic Art. Stay back. Get away from her! If you kill her, if you kill Theodora, I'll never forgive you, Aizen! I know. <laughs> Aizen, how could you? What? Malevolence! Aizen! Stay back! This... this is... Aizen! Zabid! No! It'll get 
you two! But Velvet, just look at them! It's that fire again. Amazing, it can extinguish that much malevolence. But the dragon... It's over. But... Thank you. Why didn't you break your Reaper's curse? What? Did you want me to eat its heart? Don't answer a question with another question. The Reaper's curse is mine to bear alone. The danger of becoming a dragon, however, is a curse upon all Malachim. All that malevolence. It's going to take its toll on you, too. Yeah, I can already feel it starting. It won't be long before I wind up like her. You'll have to leave your pirate buddies before things turn ugly. I'm the first mate on Eifried's ship. So, to be honest, it's probably just as well. I'd rather end up a dragon than have this curse hijack my ship and my life anymore. <sighs> but I do fear one thing. I'm afraid that when I turn into a dragon, I could end up hurting the very people I want to protect. Theodora couldn't even recognize anyone she loved anymore. You saved her, Aizen. By killing her. <clears throat> Before all this, Theodora was a kind woman. She never wanted to hurt people, and she loved more deeply than anyone I've ever known. Yeah. Sometimes to kill someone is to save them. <clears throat> you have someone you're trying to protect too, don't you? My little sister. What's she like? She's like an early blooming flower. Wise for her age. She's got it all together. <laughs> Sometimes has to treat me like I'm the kid. She cries too easily. But deep down, she's so strong. Sounds like someone I'd like to get to know better. Who knows? Maybe I'll even marry her. Zavid! Don't you worry. I won't make a move until I've killed you. Zavid, what are you saying? Consider it revenge for Theodora. I'll be the one who finally puts you out of your misery. But I'll only kill you once you've stopped being yourself. Only then. You sure? Yeah. I swear by my true name, Filk Zadea, Zavid the Oath Keeper. Ufemi Wexu. That's my true name. Using a hook to hand over a gun is against gun safety, isn't it? I'll remember it. Is there really no other way? There must be something besides turning into a dragon, or getting yourself killed, right? In the end, what matters isn't whether we get killed or not. It's whether we can take control over the direction of our own lives. That's what it means to really be alive. That sounds sad. And hard. But I understand. And I'm going to live life in my own way, too. 
<laughs> well then, I hope we'll see each other again. Where are you going? Wherever the wind takes me. Promise made. Got less for I got less grade for beating that one. The heck? Even though I thought I did a better job than with Zavid. It's not like I got KO's either. Elite Ignisite. Unlocks level 4 random skills hard mode or above. Oh, it's you! Thank you for everything you've done. Has Zavid been by since last time? Yeah, actually, he finally dropped by here the other day. Ah, it was great. We were all really happy to see him again. What about Theodora? She wasn't with him, but he made it sound like her problems were finally all resolved. He said they were going to travel together. But we don't feel lonely. Yeah, he said no matter how far apart we are, we'll always be together in our hearts, and they'll never forget us. He told us that we all share a strong bond, and it's all because... Because that's Zavid's way, right? Nuh-uh. It's because that's our family's way. All of us. <laughs> and it's a wonderful way to be. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Zavid told us that because he has family here, because he has somewhere to come home to, he'll be able to travel with an easy heart. And he left us with a huge pile of money. We told him we didn't know what to do with it all, and he just laughed. He said we could use the money to grow our family even more. If you ever see Zavid on your travels, please give him a message. Tell him you'll always have a home here. Of course. We'll make sure to pass it on to him. See ya! We got orders from headquarters. They want us to boost security for the transport unit. But the transport's got more than enough as it is. A few days back, a Gauld convoy got raided. They lost everything, down to the last coin. Thankfully, no one was killed, but the raid was such a clean job. HQ thinks it must have been the work of a pro. The demons already have us stretched thin enough, and now we have to deal with bandits on top of that? <laughs> Sounds like they got barraged by an outlaw of some kind. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Thanks for tuning in to this Let's Play of Tales of Berseria. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, and or hit the bell icon.